now we have tonight's presentation by Lynn and Associates. Introductions and happy to hear what you're doing first time and different backgrounds. My name is Zach Khan. This is Chris and Andrew. Lindsay, unfortunately, our other classmate, couldn't be here today. Um, but uh, we're here to actually share a project. So we're here from OCAS um, and we're in the Strategic Foresight and Innovation Program. Uh, and we worked on a project last spring and it just came up that it was something that uh, felt relevant for this community. Um, and we're happy to share, share that with you today. So um, just to get started, just as a primer, uh, before we jump into it, it might just help to give a bit of context to it. Uh, it is a, a, what we call a synthesis map, so there's a bit of systems thinking background. I think that's an important piece. So we'll just spend a minute or two going through that. Um, so it's a system. Um, uh, it basically, it's a set of, uh, set of things that are connected and related to one another to serve a purpose. So there's a couple of key criteria there. The, the fact that they're connected to one another uh, they have an interesting relationship, and it's ultimately for a goal. So when you really think about it, something like sand, probably not a system. You take a piece out, you still have a pile of sand. But uh, think of a car. Um, if you have like a you remove the carburetor, you no longer have a functioning car. So that, that's pretty rudimentary thinking, but when applied to something like um, a higher level of thinking, it can, it can get really interesting. So systems thinking is then the ability to see that world as those complex set of connections and relationships. So there's all types of things in our lives from, from uh, the bathtub that we fill, or the sink faucet, there's feedback loops, there's behaviors, there's stock, there's flows, all types of elements that you want to consider. I won't go into that in detail, but um, I think what's interesting is this community often rallies around um, you know, working on projects that help improve uh, civic and, and society in our city. And I think our city is a great example of an interesting, you know, a complex adaptive system. Um, there's multiple relationships and multiple interactions happening at given times. So whether you're working on bike projects or women in color, there's a bunch of media, there's a number of issues that affect the projects that you've worked on uh, in the larger context. Um, and so a lot of people, you know, maybe you've seen some of the design thinking principles where um, you, know, you have uh, an element of, you know, um, you know, understanding the strategy, discovery, you know, going wide, finding different opportunities, and then developing and, and deploying. Uh, there's some principles around systems thinking uh, that apply to this context, uh, and that and that really appreciates a diverse set of views. So, in terms of bringing systems thinking in a practical environment, you want to encourage a lot of different perspectives. There's a lot of um, there's some boundaries that you kind of have to create when you're looking at a system. Otherwise, you could go pretty pretty wide. Um, and there's a lot of uh, elements that emerge that might not be set up uh, that you have planned. Um, and so this is just an example of like a map or orientations from Al Gore's piece um, about the climate crisis. And it's not an actual depiction, like this isn't the reality, you don't have icebergs near your city, but it's a depiction of the complexities that deal with climate change. So from the variety of the, the traffic and the, and the land and the different industries that all have a stake in it, um, it's a depiction of that complex state. Um, and so we've created a synthesis map, and our topic is on digital government. So for that reason, we thought that it might be relevant to this community. It's actually behind this screen, so we're going to lift it up afterwards, and you can come check it out in more detail. But we're just going to go through uh, a couple of pieces for you. Um, and it's, it's not meant to give answers. It's not meant to provide a new type of insight. It's just in a, a method that depicts the complexity of what the government has to deal with in a digital, in a digital environment. So it uses, um, you know, it portrays some patterns and it has like a, it's, it's a dense uh, piece to convey that complexity. Um, here it is um, on, a, on a macro view. We'll go through it piece by piece and hope you can take something away. I'm going to pass it off to Andrew and walk you through. Hi, everyone. Um, so with the, um, the title of the map is our digital native land and 
like to start off by talking about the top level of the, of the map, and that is a technology timeline. So we're not going to go through the entire thing, but uh, just kind of note of note, um, in our recent history of technology, back in the uh, 80s and 90s, when cell phones, personal computers, and the internet were in their infancy, even then, usability and accessibility were kind of key elements to try and really push that technology forward. So just looking at um, accessing the internet, whether it's through a browser and the experience there, I don't know if anyone remembers Netscape, or um, looking at access from a broadband point of view or Wi-Fi. So things were kind of being always pushing forward. And now to a more recent part of our kind of technical history from social media, where personalization and uh, collaboration were big key elements of uh, the starting point over there. And speaking to personalization, something like Netflix, where if all these thousands of micro-genres that Netflix can deliver. So people started to really demand this personalization and this collaboration. And looking at a uh, government timeline of their digital services, of note, this blank area here. While what's happening in technology, government was kind of stalled in offering services, kind of like digital crickets happening here. And to the point where Around 2000, things started to pick up and always playing this kind of game of catch up with industry. So as digital services are offered by the government, there's always progression and things pushing forward. And it's this tension that's really interesting and that's what we really wanted to kind of study in this map. And now we're going to kind of walk you through the rest of the, the map in terms of accessibility, the inhibitors such as privacy, motivators like the economy, and citizen engagement. Now, Chris. Or to present, sorry. Um, yeah, so, so what's really interesting is um, looking at the responsibilities that the government has to uphold, one huge part is like promoting equity and fairness. So with accessibility, especially internet access, uh, we know that as a digital divide, it's a huge uh, piece that actually impacts the ability for government to uh, really service the, the broad spectrum of Canadians. You know, this can, you know, without having the adequate access, and the CRTC recently passed a ruling on what qualifies as that, um, you could have a less informed society with limited social and cultural connections and reduced opportunities. Um, and and the, the cost of internet has been rising, there's a lack of skill set. But really, um, it's an interesting component to think about when you think of the Canadian landscape and the number of rural communities and the challenges that are faced in uh, deploying, you know, the, the uh, the CRTC's regulated or suitable internet uh, speeds, um, it becomes quite a complex challenge. So even when you look at people who might be, you know, underserved uh, certain citizen and they might rely on certain um, programs, uh, the demand for those, you know, may not be, uh, or if it's only available on a digital format, they might not be able to access it. So it starts a whole snowball effect and there's all types of relationships. I won't go through them in, in detail, but Ultimately, the federal government, you know, are trying to provide incentives and programs for you know, service providers to actually be able to service underserved communities uh, and hopefully create a more robust, um, you know, feedback mechanism so that a lot of the digital services that are offered are intended for the audience that requires them. So, uh, accessibility is a huge part, especially in Canada, when it comes to some of the responsibilities that the government has to uphold in offering digital services. One of the other responsibilities of government is, of course, maintaining privacy. Uh, through our expert interviews and through uh, analyzing the research that we found out there, uh, we found that it fell into two primary categories of responsibility. One, uh, maintaining privacy during the collection of data, and maintaining privacy uh, with the protection of data. Collection, protection, um, both of those, if that's not maintained, can uh, delve into very scary futures. In terms of collection, you could get a big brother type of government that's just collecting without any any stop. In terms of protection, if there's no uh, uh, if there's no um, uh, if there's no protection of data, uh, you'll just have uh, all the data the government has collected out there for everyone to, to uh, everyone to uh, use. So those two uh, fears are the driving forces in this uh, loop diagram here. 
which actually uh, is what is part, uh, partly creating government side data silos. Um, and if we go to the next slide, those government data silos are isolating ministries a bit. Uh, so what that means is uh, there's a fear of sharing data between ministries. Um, uh, the way to, come, uh, to overcome that is by, uh, you know, changing le legislation or uh, uh, connecting people and having them chat. But to do that, it requires uh, a high-level response. Uh, essentially, we're saying in this, it takes a cabinet-level decision to kind of get that moving. Um, and that kind of decision is a very complex decision to be made, which might take upwards of a year to two years to make its way through all of the channels that it has to go through. So something as simple, something as seemingly simple as updating all of the web pages for Canada's government to have the same format or be on the same server may take upwards of two years and cabinet intervention to get to that point, which seems a little odd, right? That seems like it should be something simple as a flick of a switch, but in this case, uh, because it's government, not so. Um, so just on the orientation, those were two inhibitors, so some challenges in terms of the responsibility that the government has in terms of providing accessibility, making sure the privacy is protected, and there's a decision-making process. Now some of the motivators that actually um, you know, incentivize the government to adopt some of the digital technology is, you know, there is an economic perspective to it. So uh, providing economic security is, is for sure a mandate of the government. Um, even when you look at the increase in digitization across, uh, across the globe and the effects that it has on GDP um, and, and trade, there's a huge uh, benefit and there's a case to be made there. Now, underneath this, it's not shown here, but some of the challenges are the, the reliance of the Canadian economy has often been, um, I would say, a little bit later on the adoption curve. So the U.S., for example, takes on more risk and actually has you know, more innovative technologies that are often created, and then Canada is second to absorb it, and we have a much more resource-based economy. But as that starts to shift, you can see the incentive for providing a better economic future there to start, making, to start taking the steps now to introduce digital infrastructure into the government. Um, even when it comes down to the cost per transactions in different formats, there's definitely a case to be made there from, a, from an economic perspective about adopting some more digital technology. Sorry, can you uh, keep the microphone close to your mouth so I can hear you better, please? Sure. Thank you. Um, yeah, so that's the economy piece, so there's definitely that as a motivator. <clears throat> and on to citizen engagement. Um, not sure how many of you look forward to engaging with your government. Um, but that is something that they're working towards, and it's it's kind of a, a system where, um, kind of noted here, where it involves um, a level of engagement with public to build trust. And the more people feel like they can participate, and not just communicate, but participate with government, there's a lot more trust that's built in, and that's a lot more satisfaction. And that's something that the government's always striving to do, but it's always this, Kind of, as we're kind of seeing a pattern here, there's always that tension with whether it's privacy or um, keeping up with technology. It's always that issue that um, that the government's struggling with. Obviously, the demand is there uh, in accessing government through digital means. Uh, people are getting more and more connected. So that is just something that hopefully uh, something that we'll kind of see more than just plain catch up. And just looking from the tool sets, um, from what people are used to from the, from the private sector, the um, access from anytime, anywhere, easy and convenient, accessible, always on, always on, on demand. And that is something that, um, that's the expectation, and that is something that the government is striving and uh, looking to live up to. But there is hope, and we've kind of talked a lot about the different challenges here. Um, recently, the government is starting to catch up in terms of joining the Open Government Partnership, and that is a global initiative to bring transparency and accountability across the board. Working with Code for Canada, um, and that is an initiative that is kind of happening around the world as well, um, working with industry to build a partnership with government so there's kind of a level of engagement there. And the portal that we mentioned earlier, Canada.ca, and that is something that um, there's a lot of hope 
in that, started in 2013, and seemingly they still have a long way to go. <laughs> um, there was hope, uh, about 200,000 pages have been transferred to that portal, 17 million to go. So that is our uh, system map. Yeah, so just a full map in context. Uh, like I said, we're gonna, it's behind this monitor, so when the session is done, we'll roll up uh, this uh, screen. And if anyone wants to come check it out up close, uh, that's actually the, the intent of the design. It's more of an artifact for close-up inspection and some discussion. Um, just kind of walk through some, some top-level uh, items here. Um, and uh, yes, lots of sticky notes were, were harmed during the creation of this process, but they were recycled. They were. Yeah. Um, uh, but all in all, I just want to kind of bring this back to the focus of the audience, you guys uh, here today. And the, the understanding is, you know, I hope that system level thinking and just looking at some of the problems and some of the programs that you work on from the systems level is something that's beneficial um, to the projects and something that you can, you know, uh, take away, look at further, and investigate. And, um, and I hope that it makes some of the solutions more robust and more comprehensive for creating a better uh, digital society. So I hope uh, that was helpful. Um, there are other maps that our cohort did, and we're proud to share that. I'll, I'll post this link on the on the general Slack. Um, you know, there's there's one on cycling, which uh, I shared with Jake the other day. Um, there's one on social innovation, building healthy communities, civic engagement. That sounds about right. Um, so I'm happy to share these on Slack. You guys can check these out. Um, that's, that's, that's Lindsay. Um, so I don't know how we're doing on time, Raphael, but um, you can. Yeah. Okay, cool. Five minutes for questions, and if there's any particular stuff, you can come see us after. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
like I said, we're, uh, we will be hanging around for a bit after uh, the introductions of the setup is done. Um, and you can come take a closer look and we can talk uh, through the map as well. I'll talk to you around.